My goal and hope for this video is to talk about the law of chastity in a way that's less awkward than all those lessons you got as a youth about this topic. We'll see if I succeed. <laughs> It's Mimi. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Today's video, we are going to talk all about the law of chastity, what it is, why it's important, and I'm going to be answering some questions I received from you guys about this topic. I think this video will be super interesting. Obviously, I haven't like talked a lot about this topic before and it's a little bit uncomfortable for me, but just looking at what resources are out there from the church and from other people online about the law of chastity, I just felt really strongly that I needed to enter this narrative and really give my perspective as a young adult. This is something a lot of people are really uncomfortable talking about, especially, you know, parents or youth leaders, just because it can be weird. So hopefully this video can help answer your questions and I can make myself available to you guys as a resource if you ever want to talk about this, because it is important to talk about. By the way, I just want to make it super clear that I I don't want this video to be just me preaching at you because obviously I'm not perfect nobody's perfect I am just gonna try to go do my best to go through some of the church's standards about the law of chastity but yeah just know like I love you guys God loves you guys no matter what So, if you are brand new to my channel, by the way, my name is Mimi, and I make videos all about LDS news, doctrine, and culture, and we would love to have you along with us if you're interested in those topics, so don't forget to subscribe down below. So what is the law of chastity? Most people, when they hear that, they think of not having sex until marriage. However, that is just one part of it. That's obviously a big part, but the main gist behind it is not arousing any sexual feelings in yourself or in others before marriage. So that can include obviously having sex or even just like making out or touching yourself or others, uh, watching pornography and masturbating or even just having immoral thoughts too. So I actually wanna dive right into the four strength of youth and I feel like a lot of you guys are probably very familiar with this. And I know a lot of the people I'm speaking to in this video are probably not young men or young women anymore. A lot of you are probably, you know, college students, you're graduated out of this program. However, I want to make a note that this still applies to you. This applies to anyone who's not married yet. There's not another booklet like this for young adults. So if you haven't read um, this recently, I would definitely recommend checking it out again. So we have this section here on sexual purity, and it does give some specific guidelines that says before marriage do not participate in passionate kissing lie on top of another person or touch the private sacred parts of another person's body with or without clothing do not do anything else that arouses sexual feelings do not arouse those emotions in your own body those are the suggestions that we have in this book i would definitely highly recommend sticking to that that's one big thing that i wanted to get across in this video is that the law of chastity is not just about not having sex till marriage. In my opinion, it really is like a mindset and a lifestyle. And I know that this can be increasingly difficult looking at the world around us that we live in and even looking at other you know, members of the church. But you should never allow anyone to pressure you to do anything you're not comfortable with, even if they are you know, another Latter-day Saint because um, unfortunately that can happen too. As many of you are probably watching this hoping you could get like some guidelines or specific limits. While I can't provide that for you of exactly what is okay and what's not, something to really consider while you're in the midst of like doing these things is what is my objective with doing this? Am I doing this to arouse sexual feelings? Because I feel like it's so easy to be like, oh, I can cut this corner or go around this this way. And technically, that's not sex. Technically, we're not, you know, whatever. Don't just try to work your way around the limits. Really think about why am I doing this? Am I doing this to arouse sexual feelings in myself or in another person? And if the answer is yes, just avoid it. Just really listen to the spirit. The spirit will not be in your presence if you're doing something that 
is breaking the law of chastity. So don't just try to like test your limits. Really think about why you're doing things. Another thing though that I did want to say in this video is that your feelings are totally normal. Like God created us this way. God doesn't make mistakes. Sexual relations are not bad. And I feel like this is a really big problem in the church honestly is that People are so uncomfortable talking about this topic, you know, including myself right now. I'm like, this is kind of awkward. Um, but some people literally think it's sex is bad because we always hear, you know, like don't have sex before marriage that even when they are married, they still feel like sex is bad and they feel guilty for it. When honestly, these are totally normal emotions and you should not be ashamed of them. They just have a time and a place. Now this isn't even to say too that if you have had sex, if you have broken the law of chastity, you're no less than anyone else. God loves you just the same. And that's why we have the atonement. I've heard so many people tell stories about how growing up in the church, they heard about this analogy of once you have sex, you're no longer a virgin. You can't get that back. You start as like a fresh piece of gum of chewing gum and then once you have sex you're chewed up and spit out and you're no longer that same fresh piece of gum honestly i think that's horrible i hate that analogy i don't think that's right at all just know god loves you no matter what you can never go too far to take away his love for you his love for you is unconditional don't let anyone shame you just remember literally the only person you need approval from ever is jesus christ so just wanted to throw that in there too and speaking about talking about this if you are in a relationship with somebody and maybe you're approaching marriage or it's just a serious relationship, I think this is definitely something that you should talk about with them. It's really important to make guidelines for yourself and hold each other accountable because it can be very difficult, especially if you're with someone who you like know you're gonna marry down the road. The point of the law of chastity isn't just to make sure you're only ever with one person. So like if you're dating someone and you're like, I know we're gonna get married anyway, so we can just have sex now. That's not what it's about. That's definitely part of it. But when it comes down to it, it's a commandment from God. He says that sexual relations should only be had in marriage. So I would highly recommend just sticking with that. And like I said, I know it's difficult. So it's really important that you talk to your partner and really set these standards for yourself. Talk about what you're comfortable with. Talk about how you're gonna hold yourself to those. And I know it can be awkward. Um, <laughs> Cause like, it's just gonna be awkward to talk about, but I promise it's so, so worth it. And waiting until marriage, you will never ever regret it. Getting married to my husband in the temple, like knowing that we were both worthy to be there and be sealed there. Like there's nothing in the whole world that's more special to me than that. And I will never regret like, yeah, it was difficult, but I'll never regret that we made that decision. We stuck to it and we're able to get sealed. So, so worth it. Another thing kind of switching gears that I wanted to talk about was pornography. And I apologize if this video is kind of all over the place. I kind of just have a bunch of notes I want to touch on. I'm not going in any specific order. So with pornography, obviously we are just so surrounded by it today. Um, it's literally in common television shows that are top rated and you can just come across it so easily on social media. And I think probably the most difficult part about pornography is like we're always told it's bad, it's bad, don't watch it, stay far away. But if you ever come across it, oftentimes you feel like curious and you're like, what is this? But the thing is, you don't have to experience it for yourself to know it's bad. And I know it can be hard. It can like just so easily suck you in, but I promise just stay away. If you ever come across something, distract your mind with something else. Read the scriptures, or if you don't feel like reading the scriptures, listen to, you know, a spiritual song or just do something else that makes you happy or uplifts you. Just try to distract yourself with something else so that you don't get sucked into that. If any of you watching this are struggling with pornography, you really got to go to somebody about it. I know that that'd probably be so difficult and awkward and probably the last thing that you'd want to do. I know firsthand seeing people struggling with addictions in my life, that's the last thing they want to do is open up about it and like admit they think that they can keep working through it on their own. But honestly, when it comes to pornography, that is something that you'll need to go to your bishop about. The role of the bishop is not 
to discipline you. Honestly, bishops are there to love you and support you through the repentance process. I know when you have a relationship with your bishop, um, you might be fearful like, oh my gosh, like I don't want him to think differently of me. I know when I was a youth, I never like had anything I had to go to my bishop about. But if I did, I was like, that's so awkward because the bishop is my friend's dad. Like he might not let me hang out with them anymore. Um, but really the role of the bishop is to be there and love you and support you. And just from talking to bishops, they love it when you go to them and they know you have to be really brave and it's a big step. And they're just grateful that they have the opportunity to help you from there. So I know it's scary. I'm not going to say, don't be scared. Just go in. Like it'll, it might be scary and awkward, but I just know it's definitely worth it. It's not something you want to go through alone. And I just love and feel for you guys so much. I don't want you to have to work through that alone. That's too big of a burden to carry by yourself. So don't be afraid to go to your bishop. I promise your bishop has probably heard it all. <laughs> I feel like it's, I, I don't know, I haven't gone through this, but from other people's experiences, I've heard that once you finally tell someone or talk to your bishop about it, it's like a, a weight lifted off your shoulders. And if you are somebody maybe who has a loved one who is struggling with a pornography addiction, just love them. And I know that could be really difficult, especially if you're a member and you've always heard porn is bad and maybe you've never struggled with an addiction so you don't know what they're going through. So I know it'd be hard, but really just love them and be there for them and ask them how you can support them. Don't try to just like, you know, start bossing them around and take control and be like, you're not going to do this or this or this. Um, I think just asking how you can support them. And by the way, while we're talking about this, we have an incredible uh, mini two-part series on Saints Inscripted all about pornography. We had this amazing man named Nick come on and share his entire story with us. And then in the second part of the series, he does like a Q&A about pornography and he talks a lot about these topics. So I will have those videos linked below. So go check those out if this is something that you're struggling with. Obviously, I can't give like the best advice here, but he was so open and honest and incredible with sharing his experience. So I would definitely check out those videos. Okay, next up, I'm gonna be talking about like some specifics. I had some people ask me questions about NICMOs, which is non-committal makeouts or derfing, which if you don't know what that is, not gonna get into it and if it's okay or not. Obviously in the first strength of youth, it says don't passionate kiss, don't lie on top of one another. Um, so that's the guideline that's been set there. But I, I know that some, you know, college students may be like, oh, that's the first strength of youth. I'm not a youth anymore. That doesn't apply to me. I would just really encourage you again, like I said previously in this video, is to just think about your motivations of, while, of why you're doing things. So if your motivation is, you know, I really like this person, I'm attracted to them, and I really want to show them how much I care about them, that's okay. Um, I'm not going to sit here and be like, you should or shouldn't make out, but I am going to say if your motivation is this person's so hot, um, I want to feel good, I want them to feel good, and it's taking a sexual turn, that's where it's not okay. I would just highly recommend, this is just me, by the way, like I'm not speaking on behalf of the church or anything, obviously. But don't just make out with people for fun. When you think about it, when you're a Latter-day Saint, there's only how... You can only go so far. So why like push the limits? Why do that stuff with people just for fun? Um, Cause I feel like once you start like going down that rabbit hole, you wanna go further and further. You know what I mean? Like I would just recommend not doing that for fun. Find a hobby, find something else to do. I know it can be difficult when it's like normal and while everybody is doing it. But when you think about it, sexual relations really are sacred. They're meant to be shared just between you and the person that you're married to. I know it can be hard. I know there's a lot of peer pressure and especially within the church, um, you could be pressured by like another member and then you could feel really weird because you're like, if they're doing it, I should do it. Um, but just really be aware of the presence of the spirit if the spirit is still with you and pray about it. Just, yeah. I honestly, like, I don't even know if this video is going well at all. I hope you guys are gaining something from this. I just thought that it'd be something good to talk about. Okay, I wanted to add on one other question I just got on Instagram. And the question was, how do I let guys know that I follow the law of chastity? So, 
I've been like thinking about this and like talking to Eric about it and I'm like honestly I don't even know because like it's not something that like you're sitting at the dinner table on your first date. You're like, hey, by the way, I don't know if this girl lives in like a LDS dominated area or not. Um, but I think if you're just like, let's say you're kissing and maybe things are going a little bit too far, just like pull back a little bit and be like, hey, just so you know, this is what I do. This is what I don't do. Make it very clear that you're saying not just right now, but like ever. Because I know some guys, if you're like kissing and you're like, hey, I don't do that, they'll like try again the next time. Or girls too, not just guys. Um, just make it very clear that those are your standards for now, forever. And if they are not down, drop them. Not worth it. You don't want someone who's always going to pressure you. Truly, if you're in a relationship with someone, you want them to love and value you and what you believe and what your values are. And if you can tell they're like, annoyed by it. Maybe they can even be annoyed by it, but they're like, okay, I understand. It's just important to communicate it. And if they don't respect your standards, then they don't respect you. The last thing that I wanted to say and just speak on a bit is about not judging other people who maybe have broken the law of chastity or even if you have like a roommate and you're like, oh my gosh, I know she was like making out with this guy or she had a guy past 10 p.m. or like whatever the rules are. Really do your best not to judge these people. It's not your job to judge them. It's really not. It's the job of the savior. And even the savior when he was on this earth, he walked with these people. He walked with the people, um, with the woman who was caught in adultery. Like he loved these people and talked to them. Do as the savior would. Try to stay in your lane. I know it's easier said than done, um, but you guys just do the right thing. And I know you will. I know all of you watching are so incredible and I really hope that this video helped a little bit. I know it was kind of all over the place, but I really just felt strongly about making this. So if you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments down below. If you don't feel comfortable talking about it, like publicly in the comments, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I'll have my Instagram in the description and I'd be happy to chat. If you're interested in watching more videos about Latter-day Saint topics, don't forget to subscribe below. We'd love to have you as part of our little community here. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.